Hello, my name is Michael Prom, Applications Engineer for Applied Engineering. This video is going to show off the new simulation functionality in Inventor 2010. As you can see here, I'm going to switch over to the new Dynamic Simulation mode, which is going to allow me to add movement and uh, view the functionality of my assembly. Once I've moved over to the, the Dynamic Simulation mode, First thing I'm going to do is see which groups are actually allowed to move. So I'm going to color my, my movement. And you can see there that my ink cartridge assembly is not colored. So what I need to do is actually add a constraint to this because it's under constrained. In Inventor 2010 with the dynamic simulation, I can actually add constraints to an assembly while I'm in the dynamic simulation. Um, in previous releases, I'd actually have to go back to the regular mode of assemblies, add the constraints, and then go back into simulation, which would actually take a, quite a bit of time. So they've added the functionality of add constraints right inside the dynamic simulation mode. And if I switch to the color of the, the movement, you can see that my actual module for the ink cartridge can move as well. So I, I've um, fixed that problem. If I grab and drag, you can see the movement capabilities of this ink cartridge assembly. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is that mate that I just inserted, I actually want to add some movement to it. So I can go in under the properties and select the movement that I want to add to this functionality. In this case, it's going to be velocity. And you can see with my graph here, I can add all sorts of different options for velocity, um, the time, and also the acceleration. So I just add couple components to this and I now want to play my simulation to see what's happening. As this plays you can see that plastic part went right through the other one. And that's not good. That, that would not happen in real life. Um, so I need to make some changes to my assembly and the first thing I'm going to do is go under my insert joint button and add a contact. And what this contact will allow me to do is when this assembly moves across with the ink cartridges and connects with the lower seal assembly, it's actually going to push it um, as though it would in a real component. Now once I have this done, I need to add a couple other constraints as well. Uh, as this lower seal assembly moves across, you can see there's some rollers and some slots. So what I need to do is add another joint so this acts as though it would if it was an actual assembly. So I come in and I add um, the curve that's going to be sliding on and also my roller assembly is going to be sliding on that curve. And I'm going to actually do this for both my pins. Now once I have all my constraints added to this, I can actually go back in and make some changes and see how this assembly is going to move. But before I do any of that, um, the next thing I want to do is actually come in and add a trace to this. So what this trace allows me to do is select any point on an assembly on a component and this I'm going to measure the velocity acceleration of this point. So with that done I'm going to replay my assembly and see now what happens when my ink cartridge comes across and contacts the seal assembly. Hopefully this time it's actually going to move the seal assembly too. shouldn't say hopefully, I know I do my job right, so it's going to contact this and make it move as well. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that at the end there, the back of that seal assembly jumps up and down, and this is not going to be acceptable. Um, the seal is not going to make proper contact. Uh, in fact, I want to actually measure this with that trace I put on, so we're going to take a look at the force that's happening um, at this point with my seal assembly. And then I also want to take a look at that trace I put on there to measure the velocity. Now you're going to notice that there's a lot of spikes, there's a lot of jumping around in this, so this is, again is not going to be acceptable. Uh, I want to do something to actually smooth this out and uh, make the seal have a better attachment to the assembly. So what I'm going to do is go back into my insert joint mode and I'm going to add a little spring to this. Now the spring is going to add some tension to it and make sure instead of having all the pinks, all, all the jostling around, it's going to have a nice smooth contact and insertion um, into the cartridge assembly. 
So I can just uh, choose my coil spring here and select a couple points. Now there's no need to be concerned about exactly what the spring looks like. Um, in real life, you know, it has some eyes on here to be able to go over those little pieces that are sticking out on the plastic parts. But the main thing is I have a capability of adding all the um, functionality, like the stiffness, dampening ratio that I would um, in my engineering calculations. So anything I do in here is going to be brought over into the, sim the simulation to make sure that's going to function properly. I can even uh, change the coils and the wire thickness uh, to make sure that it's happening uh, the way it would if this was uh, a complete assembly. In this case, I'm going to add a little bit of color to this, just to make it a little easier to see, and we'll select OK. Now, with the spring inserted in here, I'm going to take one last look at this and see how that spring made any changes to my assembly. Again, if I did my job right, this is going to actually smooth this out and um, make a nice smooth contact between the seal and the ink cartridge. Now it's going to slow it down a little bit because uh, the spring is making the, the simulation run some calculations to make sure it's acting properly. But you notice that there's no jostling around. It's actually a nice smooth contact and the rollers are going up that uh, incline there nice and smooth without the, the cartridge bouncing around. Now to measure this even better, what I can do is reopen that output grapher that I had started earlier and take a look at what's happening as that trace goes across and these two seals and the ink cartridge assembly are connected together. Now you notice that there's been a couple little spikes but overall it's a nice smooth line um, compared to what it was before with all those peaks. So what this means is that by uh, adding that spring I've accomplished what I need to with assembly and this is all part of the whole digital prototyping idea picture that Autodesk has um, being able to realize what you can do before you actually build this model.